because we believe that there is a superpower. He will have all his previous sins forgiven. When they read Surah Al-Fatiha, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين. So I used to hear about Masjid al-Falah and I wanted to come, but the Sheikh the Zawla Khairan and the Imam they said we don't want to invite. So I said I have to come whether you like it or not. Okay. Then they said if you have to come then we invite. And I used to hear a lot about the masjid, mashallah, tabarakallah. And now I am more impressed, really. Mashallah. May Allah reward you. And uh, really, it is more than what I have heard of it. Especially, there are so many youngsters uh, attending the masjid, which is really great. Which is really great. Um, now, uh, just for your information, it will be a challenge for the speaker to uh, address a mixed audience. When there are youngsters and when there are uh, middle-aged, senior people and different backgrounds, this would be a challenge. Uh, why is it a challenge? Because for me, I would like to address youngsters and give attention to them more than giving any more than giving enough attention to the senior people. And why? Because the senior people, mashallah, they have so many. They have so many lectures, and uh, the the youngsters. If you don't give them attention, then their concentration span, which is already reduced because of the TikTok. These are the TikTok generation. Yeah, then it will be even reduced more. So that is a challenge for me. So what is the solution for that? The solution for that is to use all my presentation skills that I learned throughout my life in order to keep everyone engaged. Yeah? Is that okay for everyone? Yes. And inshallah, by the end, I will have a, a quick test, a quick quiz. And I will ask people, and those who are winners, inshallah, our Imam volunteered to give them yani, a very good prize. Yeah. Uh, the British culture, the British culture for your information, is to get that what you don't own. <laughs> this is the British culture. Because how is that? Okay, this is the first question actually. How is that a British culture? If you heard it from me, don't answer it. If you heard it from me before. So how is that uh, how is that a British culture to give something that you don't own? This is the first question. Uh, just a minute, don't answer. Have you heard it from me or not? Say Kasmi. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You? Huh? Just a minute, don't answer. Have you heard it from me or not? No. No? No, this brother. By anyone else? So we have two people now. <coughs> we have two. Only two? Okay. The three? Five. Okay, can you, can everyone write it down in a piece of paper? Or is there a WhatsApp group no, no. for the masjid? Uh, paper. Huh? Paper. Paper? Now what? Paper. Now what? <laughs> now we are talking about TikTok and you say now I will go back. To Wait, the you said what's that group of asking Right. Okay. Can you write it down and send it and let us see who wins that? Five. Okay. We don't want to upset you. Come, come here. Whisper it in my ear. Come, come here. Just whisper the answer in my ear. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Dangerous guy. <laughs> Have you heard it from me? No. Say Kasim. Well, no. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yes, come. Then come. Yeah. Come. Give the answer to the brothers. Yes, yellow. Yeah, yeah. 
So you will be recorded and you will be on BBC. Philistine. Explain what, man? Does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah. what, the, what, the, what the British give, what they don't want. Yeah, so explain to have you understood what he meant? Yeah. Brother, brother, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> the British gave. Who, who did they give Philistine to? Yeah. Did it belong to them? No. 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 Yeah. So, like, mashallah. Exactly. Mashallah. So you give him a prize. <laughs> yeah. Give him a good prize. Imagine one pound of prize. <laughs> no, the food is for everyone. No, okay. no hot wings. Yeah, no hot wings. So this is true. So now, because I'm British, so I will give things that I don't owe. But our brothers, this, as I told you, it will not be a classical lecture because of what? Because half of the audience are our youngsters. And you don't want us to neglect the youngsters. Agree or not? Yes or no? Yes. All of us sacrifice our life for our youngsters. Did you get that, youngsters? Yeah? Why? You, when you become British, you give things that you don't own. But because you are Muslim, you don't do that. Yes or no? As a Muslim, you give what you own. You don't give that what you don't own. Clear? Yeah, because yeah, that, this is against Sharia. Okay. Uh, now, regarding the topic. First of all, I will speak a little bit, then I will ask questions in order to make sure that everyone is engaged. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to lose the youngsters. And we always say that uh, the Masajid, they don't cater for the youngsters, the speakers, and they are, their, their talks are boring, and the young people don't like to attend. Okay, first of all, uh, the first point. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, my dear youngsters, we need to acknowledge the fact that Islam built the greatest civilization known to mankind. Islam built what? The greatest civilization known to humanity. How is that? Now, when did the Prophet ﷺ was sent? How many years? ago, roughly speaking, 1400 years, roughly speaking, 14, 1440, okay, Hijrah years. Now, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away which year? Huh? 600? 32. 32. Okay, we will use the, we will use the, uh, uh, Gregorian calendar. Hijri calendar, anyone know? Huh? Which year? No. 11. 11th of Hijr. And then we have the Khulafa al Rashidin. The Khulafa al Rashidin period lasted for how many years? Come on. Roughly speaking. Khulafa al-Rashidin, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali bin Abi Talib. Don't Google it, ya rajul. Yes, stop. Yes. Huh? 30. Excellent. Okay. So we have 11 years or 10 years during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, followed by 30 years, the Khulafa al-Rashidin. After Khulafa al-Rashidin, we have which period? Bani Umayyad. Umayyad period. Umayyad period lasted for how long? Mm -hmm. Yes? 200 years. No. Yeah. They lasted for around 90 years. Okay, because it ended at 132 Hijrah. Okay, 
Then after the Umayyan period, we have which period? We have Abbasi period. The Abbasi period lasted for how many years, roughly speaking? 50. 50? No. Much more than that. 150, yes. Uh, no, just less than that. 650. Huh? 650. Did you Google it? No, I don't know. You don't have a phone? No. I just talk with How are you living without a phone? <laughs> Mashallah, who is your father? He's not here. But you are happy to live without a phone. Ah, because you, your parents force you not to. Yeah? But see, youngsters, so there is a young person who is living in the 20th century without a phone. And he's smiling and he's happy. And he's happy. Okay, this is good. This is a good. You, you learn this in. in uh, what did you learn this? I just guessed it. Uh -huh. <laughs> but okay, let me turn it to be a positive. Even his guess is close to the truth. Yeah? So this is how genius he is, mashallah. Say mashallah. Okay, so the uh, Abbas period ended 656 Hijrah. Okay, now let us talk about the Hijrah period. So since the time of the Prophet Sallallahu or the advent of the Prophet Sallallahu until the end of the Abbasi period, we have 650 years, almost 650 years. Islam during that period was either the main global civilization the main superpower or one of the main civilizations. One of the main global civilizations or one of the main superpowers in the world. <coughs> Youngsters, we talk about America, we talk about Russia. Islam during that period was greater than America, was greater than Russia. Yeah, this is for how long? For 650 years during the Umayyad period and it is very important maybe the masjid can uh, you know can teach some history some uh, history lessons this is so important to know something about our great history during the Umayyad period the Islamic Caliphate they call it Caliphate uh, spread and the area of it, the area of it was greater than Russia. Russia now is the biggest country in terms of space, 17 million kilometers. Yeah, the Islamic state at that time was around 20 million kilometers. It extends from Morocco all the way to the borders of China and parts of India and many parts of or some parts of Europe and the so-called Middle East and so on. Imagine and when Umar ibn Abdul Aziz came and he found that Islam is spreading so fast and Muslims are taking more areas and that was just 100 years after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu He said, let us calm down. We want to establish ourselves in those new areas. During the Abbasi period, Abu Ja'far al-Mansur, one of the caliphate, he used to look at the clouds. And he used to speak to the clouds. He used to say to the clouds, go wherever you want to go. Your rain, I will benefit from your rain here in Baghdad. What does that mean? What does that mean? Big space. Huh? Big land, big space. A huge land. So whatever the clouds yeah, send their rain, it will be part of what? 
the Islamic Caliphate. And we, I don't want to go into many stories of how powerful were the Muslim Caliphate during that. Okay, so Islam was the main superpower or one of the main superpowers for over 650 years. Then the Mongols managed to destroy the Islamic Caliphate. At that time, do you know where was the Islamic Caliphate? The capital of the Islamic Caliphate, anyone knows? Baghdad. Baghdad. Okay, Baghdad. It was what? The capital of the Islamic Caliphate. And there was no Caliphate for almost 50 years. And then Islam managed to what? To rebuild the Islamic Empire again within 50 years. And then we started to see what? Of 50 years after the Abbasi period, the emergence of a new Islamic superpower. Which one was that? Anyone knows? Yes? Excellent. MashaAllah. What's your name, boy? Huh? Yahya. MashaAllah, Yahya. Excellent. Excellent. So it was what? The beginning of the Ottoman Empire. And then the Ottoman Empire started to uh, expand, expand, expand. Again, it became a superpower within a short period of time. It was a huge, another a huge country or a state or a caliphate or empire. Call it what you want to call it. How long the Ottoman Empire lasted for? Six over 600 years. Okay, now, brothers, okay, sisters, youngsters, simple calculation. We said that Islam has been there for how many years? For how many? 1,400 years. Out of those 1,400 years, how many years Islam was a superpower? Allah, Masha Allah. Clever boy. What's your name? Ahmad, Masha Allah. Masha Allah. Ahmad, you will. And he pronounced it not Ahmad. He pronounced it properly. Yes? Ahmad. You are his teacher. Masha Allah, that's why. He's your teacher? So who's your teacher? Your mom. Ah, mashallah, Maulana Ta'ala. Mashallah, where is Maulana Ta'ala? He's not here. Anyway, congratulations. Yeah, pronounce it correctly, Ahmed. Very good, Ahmed. Well done. Yeah. How many years? 1,215. Mashallah, Tabarakallah. Allahumma barik. Now, 1,250 years out of 1,400 years. What is the percentage, roughly speaking? 80, 85%. Now, what does that mean, brothers? Yeah? What does that mean? It means that Islam was either the main superpower or one of the main superpowers of the entire world for 85% of its existence. Did you get that or not? Can someone repeat it, please? Okay, you will repeat it, young boy? Okay, stand up, please. Masha Allah. Islam was a superpower. For 85% of his existence. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Allah barik. Wallahi. I am so impressed with your master. MashaAllah. Serious. I'm just living two mi one mile away from you. Yeah, our youngsters are not like you. <laughs> so what is the difference? It's just, MashaAllah. Now I need to take off my hotel <laughs> jacket because it is becoming serious. MashaAllah. You have to be careful with those youngsters. Okay, 
ما شاء الله دي افيري كلفر اه يس اوكي جزاك الله خير اوكي فيري جود واتس يور نيم حبيبي دانيا ما شاء الله يا الله بليس يو دانيا سو وي سيد وات بليز ايفري ون دو ريمبر ذيس فاكت وات از ات اسلام was either the main superpower or one of the main superpowers for 85% of its existence. Which means that for Islam not to be a superpower, this is what? This is what? Uh-huh. What is the word? Strange. Uh-huh. Exceptional. The norm is what? What is the norm? Yes, the norm is Islam by nature. By nature, doesn't accept to live just as a we nation. Islam by nature lives as a superpower, as a civilization. Is that clear for everyone? Yes. Okay. How are we doing so far? <coughs> Everyone is engaged or not yet? Yeah. Or you are? Huh? Everyone is engaged? Yes or no? Tell me. Yeah. Yes. If you don't respond, I will leave. Okay. My house is not far away. I will leave. And I will never come back. If you don't respond. You haven't seen me when I am angry. Okay. Now, this great religion, this great deen of Allah, how did it manage to build the greatest civilization known to humanity? This is a very fundamental question. And let me fast forward, okay? I was reflecting upon the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam when he said Islam is built on Islam is built on five what? Five pillars. The first one is what? Shahadatain. Shahadatu an la ilaha illallah wa anna wa anna muhammadan rasulullah. The second one is what? Establishing salah. The second, the third one is what? Zakah. Giving zakah. The fourth one is what? Siyam. And the fifth one is what? Hajj. Yeah? The Hajj of Bayt Allah al-Haram. Now, these are the pillars of Islam. Those pillars of Islam, are they enough to build or to be the foundation of the greatest civilization known to mankind? Yes. Yes. Okay, can someone repeat the question, please? Can someone repeat the question? Yeah, all brothers are from this side. What about this side? Uh Uh-huh, come on. You want to repeat the question? Five. I want brothers from here. Okay. Yeah, repeat the question. You are recording it for your, يعني, for your uh, social media. Do it. Fisabilillah, man. Not for everything. Yeah, people pray and they cry when they are praying. Yeah, and they are recording themselves. And Ya Allah, doing it for your sake. Ya Allah, doing it for your sake. Stop the wrong part. Yes. The question was, are these five things enough to build the great civilization in the time? Excellent. Masha Allah. What is your name? Khalil. 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 Masha Allah. Mateena fi dunya Khalil. Faqal na'am. Khalil is my shaksin. La Khalil wa fa'il. Okay, Khalil. Masha Allah. Okay, can someone repeat the question here, please? Okay, mashallah, young boy, go ahead. 
How? What? Civilization. Okay. Another one. Excellent boy. What's your name? Muhammad? Abdul Hadi. MashaAllah. May Allah bless you. May Allah give you tawfiq. MashaAllah. Say Amin. Yes, brothers. Come on. This is a serious question. What is the question again? Okay, young boy. Okay, uh huh. But we added one thing. Okay, good. Uh huh. Carry on. Your father will can help him. Islam came Okay, how did Islam manage to build? Yes, young boy. Excellent boy, mashallah. Those five pillars, are they enough? Are they enough to build the greatest civilization known to humanity? Have you ever thought of this question, brothers and sisters? Brothers. Now, okay, again fast forward because of time. If we really analyze the situation, we will see that those five pillars, yes, they are the foundation of the greatest civilization. If we understand shahadatain as they should be understood, if we understand salah as it should be understood, if we understand zakah as it should be understood, if we understand siyam, which is ahead of us, one week ahead of us, as it should be understood. And if we understand Hajj in the right way. And not only that, if we put them into practice as Allah wants them to be put into practice, then those five pillars will change our life completely upside down. And then Islam will build the greater civilization or will build itself as another great civilization again. Are you following that, brothers and sisters? Yes. And once Islam is built as another superpower, another civilization, we will not see the injustice that is taking place in the world now. We will not see global injustice. We will not see uh, People in Gaza starving to death in the middle of the Middle East, in the middle of this so-called civilized world, and no one is able to what? No one is able to help them, let alone to stop the, the bombing and the daily killing. If Islam was a superpower, this will never happen. Yes, my dear brothers, yeah, my dear young, yeah, my dear youngsters, but the, we need to be confident that Allah Jalla wa ala, Allah Jalla wa ala, because He obliged us to observe those five pillars. Allah Jalla wa ala, through these five pillars, will reform the Ummah, and the Ummah will become another superpower. Be even in that within a short period of time. And I am very optimistic that especially our youngsters here in the UK, they will be the pioneers of this reformation, reformation journey. Be even in that Now, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, as we are approaching the month of Ramadan, Ramadan the month of Ramadan is in the center of this reformation journey. What is it again? Ramadan, fasting the month of Ramadan is in the center of what? Of this reformation journey or reform journey. Okay? Now, how is that? First of all, this humanity cannot survive cannot listen to this carefully unless they submit 
to a superpower above them. And Americans, they always discuss this, especially they discussed it after the killing of George Floyd. They started the discussion again. Power breeds corruption. Power breeds injustice. And they are discussing this because they couldn't see that you can be powerful but you can be just. And Islam is giving us the solution. If you submit to Allah Jalla Ala, then you will not have طُغْيَان كَلَّا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَا يَطْغَى أَرْوَحَاهُ سَبَعًا Yeah? Because you will believe that there is a superpower above you that will control you. Did you get this point, brothers and sisters? That's why we say that Islam is the only way of life that is qualified to build a superpower without corruption, without injustice. Because we believe that there is a superpower, there is the real power above us that will keep us in control. Okay, the young cells are starting to switch off. Okay, now, Ramadan is one of those pillars that will cause this reform. The center of this reform, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, remember this. The center of this reform is to worship Allah alone. No reform can take place without what? Worshipping Allah alone. And to worship Allah alone, this needs you to what? To think of your Akhirah all the time. <coughs> because you know that this life is just a temporary period of time. So the main pillar of this reform, of rebuilding ourselves as another great civilization, <coughs> is submission to Allah Jalla and believing in the day of resurrection. ألف لام ميم ذلك الكتاب لا غيب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يؤمنون If there is no belief in the Akhirah people will be lost That's why the main aim of fasting is what? Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattakun. The main aim of fasting is to gain the pleasure of Allah Jalla Ala and to remove the anger of Allah Jalla Ala and to gain, to increase your submission to Allah Jalla Ala. Clear? Everyone? Can what, someone summarize this? So the main aim of fasting is, again, to increase your submission to Allah Jalla To gain the pleasure of Allah Jalla and to avoid the anger of Allah Jalla And this is the reality of the taqwa. Can someone repeat that? Okay. Yes, young boy. L louder, please. Okay, so the main aim of fasting is what? Okay, submission to Allah and then to gain his pleasure and then to avoid his anger. And this is what? Okay. <coughs> Brothers, <coughs> sisters, everyone, young self, always think of this in your mind. Always, young self, please listen to me carefully. Yeah? Don't think that my parents are imposing upon me to fast and the, uh, I go to school 
Everyone is eating around me. Everyone is enjoying, quote unquote, yeah, their time. Say to yourself, no, I am empowered by Allah. Why I am fasting? I am what? First of all, I am submitting to the Supreme Being, Allah. And they are not sub submitting to the Supreme Being. The second one is what? I am getting His pleasure. They are not getting their pleasure. The, the Allah's pleasure. And the third one is what? Avoiding Allah's anger. One day Allah will become angry at them and Allah will not become angry at me. Okay? Young says everyone. And the more you remind yourself of this reality, the more you will feel the taste of fasting. And Young says, listen to this. Okay, when you love something, you like to sacrifice for that. And in fact, you will enjoy sacrifice, okay, because you love whatever you love. When you do this practice, which is talking to yourself, thinking about the purpose of fasting constantly, especially when you have temptations, in front of you, either food, a drink, or maybe, okay, some, you know, haram images in front of you, or on your mobile phone, or uh, some outside. You abstain from this, and then you tell yourself, ask yourself, why I am doing it? I am doing it to receive the pleasure of Allah, to avoid the anger of Allah to increase my submission to Allah You will find the sweetness of Iman in your heart. And that sweetness of Iman, yeah, has no value whatsoever. Okay, everyone? So this is the first message to you. The second message to you, okay, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, in order to get the maximum of the month of Ramadan. By the way, this is the meaning of the hadith that we always repeated, the first point, which is what the Prophet says, Man saama Ramadan imanan wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhabbin. The one who fasts the month of Ramadan, believing that Allah Jalla wa Ala commanded him to fast, seeking the reward, he will have all his previous sins forgiven. This is message number one. Message number two. Okay. And now, whenever you want to achieve something very well, you think about it ahead and you plan for it. <coughs> for example, if you want to go for a holiday, do you, what do you do before you go to a holiday? What do you do before going for a holiday? Uh huh. Yes. Say Bismillah. Okay. Uh huh. Excellent. What is it again, Lauda? Plan for it. Do we go for a holiday without any planning? Do we go for a holiday without any planning? No. Now my question to you: Why do we plan? before we go to a holiday. Why do we plan for our holidays? Uh-huh. Why? Why? Yes? Yes, so that the holiday goes well. And for the holiday to go well. Excellent. To, huh? Can someone use another word? Uh -huh. To, to be prepared in order to what? To enjoy it. Excellent to get the maximum of it. Yes or no? Yes. Can you get the maximum of your holiday and you go, for example, you went to another country. Let us say that you want, inshallah, to Al-Quds after it is liberated. Inshallah. Okay? You don't know which hotel you will take. You don't know where is Al-Quds. You know the opening. You don't know the opening hours. You don't know what to do next. 
your time will be wasted because what? Because you did not plan for it. Now, the month of Ramadan is an extraordinary period of time that will reform you, will change you, will make you a better Muslim. It will increase your submission to Allah. It will help you to increase the, uh, the, the pleasure of Allah Jalla on you. It will help you to avoid the anger of Allah. This is more important than the holiday. So you need to what? We need to plan for the month of Ramadan. Okay, brothers, and we will inshallah conclude. Okay, are you tired or not? No. No. no, tell the truth. <laughs> I'm not closing my eyes. I still have no love. No. 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 no way. No ah, way. See, no. some people said kind of. <laughs> you are the honest person. MashaAllah. <laughs> okay, we will, inshallah. Okay, we will finish soon. Okay. Okay, brothers, what are the main activities we need to do during the month of Ramadan? Okay, young boy there. Pray extra salah. Bathe, pray. Pray extra salah. Pray extra salah. Excellent. Okay. We want yani, new, yes, new hands. Yes. Oh, excellent. Read more Quran. Yes. Fasting and doing dua. Fasting and doing dua. Excellent. MashaAllah. What else? What else? Yes. Staying away from the haram. Excellent. MashaAllah. Staying away from haram. Giving money to charity. Giving money to charity. Wallahi, I don't need to give a lecture now. <laughs> oh, every, mashallah, everyone knows. Yes. Yes. Allahu Akbar. MashaAllah. Daniel. MashaAllah. Daniel. Daniel. Are you teasing your friend? <laughs> so you are not doing this for the sake of Allah. <laughs> Astaghfirullah. <laughs> okay. Jazakallah <laughs> khair. Excellent, Daniel. Okay. The boy next to you. Uh -huh. Increasing good deeds. MashaAllah. Those young boys. MashaAllah. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. What else? Okay, stay up for Taraweeh and Tahajjud, and maybe in the future get a chance to do it. Uh, yeah. 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 MashaAllah, MashaAllah, excellent. To do Atikaf and pray your Taraweeh and Tahajjud. Excellent. Okay. See, if we go through the verses in which Allah Jalla spoke about, by the way, a question. In which surah Allah Jalla wa Ala spoke about the month of Ramadan? Al-Baqarah. Surah Al-Baqarah. Al what else? Surah Al-Qadr. Excellent. In Surah Al-Qadr, what Allah Jalla wa Ala mentioned what? Ramadan or what? Laylat Al-Qadr. Excellent boy. Okay. Other than Surah Al-Baqarah, have Allah Jalla wa Ala mentioned Ramadan in any surah other than Surah Al-Baqarah? No. How many times the word Ramadan was mentioned in the Quran, by the way? Yes, young boy? <coughs> One time. Where? <laughs> Excellent. Shahr Ramadan, alladhi unzila fihim, Quran hudan linnas wa bayinatim min al-huda wa al-furqan, which our Imam, mashallah, beautifully recited. It is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. Okay. Now, brothers and sisters, let us read those verses and reflect upon them quickly. First of all, Allah Jalla wa Ala says, Ya ayu al-ladhina man hu kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala al-ladhina man qablikum la'allakum tattakum. So the main activity that we need to do during month of, the month of Ramadan is what? The fasting. Fasting. Clear? Okay. Then after that, Allah Jalla wa Ala said, شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان. الله جل وعلا منشن what the recitation of what of Quran. Okay, brothers and sisters, let us do 
Yeah, a Sufi exercise, yes? Are we allowed to do a Sufi exercise? Yes, you will not, Yani, call me Wahhabi. No problem. Okay, fine. Can you close your eyes, brothers, everyone? Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Come on. Close your eyes, man. Okay. Close your eyes. Subhanallah, the shaykh there is not closing your eyes. Okay, how many people, close your eyes, man. How many people are memorizing the Quran entirely? How many hafaz we have? Raise your hands. High, high, high. No, completely. MashaAllah, put your hand down. MashaAllah. Excellent, this was the exercise. Okay, open your eyes, please. Very good. We have a number of people who memorized the Quran. Maybe some others raised their hands because they thought that we are talking about yani, the memorization of Quran. Insha'Allah, brothers and sisters, say Insha'Allah. Insha Next time I come and I ask who has memorized the Quran, we want everyone to memorize the Quran. Yes or no? Inshallah. Now my message to the seniors. <coughs> yeah? Seniors, my seniors. Okay? That, listen, now we see in the UK uh, a revolution. Yeah, not, not against Rishi Sunak. <laughs> By, uh, otherwise, you would have another uh, press conference. <laughs> like yesterday. Like, okay. Another revolution, which is what? We see so many of our youngsters are becoming huffad and they are really putting good effort to memorize the Quran. Do you, is this not noticeable or not? Yes. Yes. Do you notice that or not? Yes. Uh, a week ago, exactly like this time, we had an event in East London Mosque. Anyone knew about that event? Yes. What was it? <laughs> yeah. Quran Revision Day. Quran Revision Day. There were many young people who managed to read the entire Quran before Isha time. In fact, there was a young boy, his age is 10, he managed to read the entire Quran from his memorization before Maghrib Salah. Is this something that we, as British Muslims, yeah, need to be proud of or not? Yes. yes. Are you proud of this boy? Yes. Wallahi, I'm proud of him. I'm proud of our youngsters. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Okay? Now, we want more youngsters to become huffad. Yes, youngsters, inshaAllah or not? Yes. Yes? But also, the senior brothers. Don't be complacent. Don't say my children are doing effort and I'm not doing that. Many of the senior people are doing that. Khalas. My parents, my children are going for effort. I will continue reading the Quran in this broken way. When we read, yeah, open the last para of the Quran, for example, yeah, let us let us do this exercise. Okay. Yeah, let us do this exercise. <coughs> so, opening the last para of the Quran, just randomly, yeah, and read. Many of our senior people in terms of age, how do they read? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. What was is this what many senior people read or not? No. Never. No, let us be honest. Yes. Is this the way many senior people read or not? Yes. It is. It is. We need to put an end to this. Yes, brothers? Yes. Okay. Listen. For me as an Arab person, 
or even those who learned Arabic. When I hear someone, as we said just now, what is your name? His name is Ahmed, and he's saying Ahmed. I laugh. I say Habibi Ahmed. When they read Surah Al Fatiha, <laughs> Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, I said, What is this? You do not imagine it, how it means to an Arab person. But I always say to brothers, yeah, imagine you always laugh about Arabs that they don't differentiate between what? B and P. B and P. P. Yes? When they say Pepsi, they don't say Pepsi, they say Pepsi. <laughs> See, all of you laugh. <laughs> Yes or no? You find it, you find it uh, funny, yeah? Uh, Bebo, yeah? Bebo, what? Bebo, come on, man, what is that? Bebo, yeah? People, Habibi, people. You are laughing. We should laugh more, but laugh more with what? With sadness. When a person being Muslim, for 10 years, 20 years, and they're still reading. Sorry to say this, I know it is, might be yani, a very tough statement. He's still reading. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Alamani Rahim. What is this? Yeah? Okay, we are not talking about the Tajweed, etc., but this shows that this person, please listen to this carefully. This shows that this person did not spend enough time with the Quran. Yes or no? Yes. We want this month of Ramadan to be a turning point in terms of our relationship with the book of Allah Jalla Yes, inshallah or not? Yes or no? Inshallah. Yes. Inshallah, yes. Clear brothers and sisters. We need the Quran, brothers, the Quran is the light that Allah Jalla Ala sent to us, honored us, by which we can see the real life. Ya ayyuhan nas, qad ja'akum burhanun min rabbikum wa anzalna ilaykum nooran mubina. We have revealed to you an evidence and we have sent to you what? No, the light. Without the Quran, brothers, if you are not connected to the Quran, you are blind. You don't see the real life as it is because you are living in darkness. So we need to change this. We need to re-establish our relationship with what? With the Quran. Clear, brothers, sisters? The last thing I would like to mention, just because of time, the Prophet said, Man lam yada' qawla al-zur wal amal bihi wal jahla falaysa lillahi hajatun fi an yada'a ta'amahu wa shawabah. The one who does not. Anyone can translate this? MashaAllah. Yes, young boy. Can you say in Arabic when I translate? Okay, man lam yada' qawl al-zuri wal amal bihi wal jahla falaysa lillahi hajatun fi an yada'a ta'amahu wa sharaba. Whoever doesn't need bad speech and his action and acting upon it and what's the last one? Wal jahla. And ignorance, then Allah doesn't need him to leave his food and drink. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Where did you learn Arabic? Masha Allah with the stand Norman from America. Okay, we have our Sheikh there. Yes, yes, Sheikh. The translation. No, he said it. He said it. What? He said it first. Say it again, man. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Wow. What? In Paris. <laughs> now, Maulana is in Paris. <laughs> Maulana should not be in Paris, man. Oh. Yalla, yalla. Now we embarrassed him more. He wish if he did not attend. <laughs> he will now say to the Imam, please don't invite him again. <laughs> yes, come on. 
Faith, anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, yes, please. Uh, that one who did not leave the um, bed, you know, the, uh, false life, speech, life, life, foul language, acting upon it, and did not leave ignorance, then Allah does not need, Allah does not have need for his leaving the food and drink. Yeah, okay. <coughs> it, the one who doesn't leave bad language, bad behavior during his month of Ramadan, during his fast, Allah Jalla is in no need for him to abstain from food and drink. Of course, that doesn't mean that you should not fast. No, fast, but what? This is my final message. Improve your akhlaq. Yes, brothers and sisters? Yeah. yeah? What is it? Everyone says that loudly. What is it? Improve what? Improve what? We want Ramadan to be a short journey that will help us to what? To change our bad akhlaq. To become the best in Afla. Listen, brothers. Listen, brothers. We have conquered the entire world by our Afla before we conquer the world by the sword. Did you get that or not? We want to conquer the minds and hearts of the society around us by our akhlaq. Why Allah Jalla wa ala said to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa inna kala ala khuluqin azim, in surah, which surah is this? Which surah? Wa inna kala ala khuluqin azim. Come on. Which surah, ma? Noon. Al-Noon. Noon. Surah Al-Noon, when the Surah Al-Noon was revealed? Among the first surahs, Either the second, the third, fourth, fifth maximum. Allah Jalla wa Ala spoke about the character of the Prophet in the beginning of da'wah because Allah Jalla wa Ala knows the impact of da'wah, the impact of akhlaq on da'wah. So we need what? To improve our akhlaq. My final message to the youngsters, especially with your, with your parents. Yes, youngsters? Especially with who? Yes. We don't want you to have good akhlaq outside and inside your mom is asking you to do something and then you tell her, oh, mom, you keep demanding, you keep asking, you keep demanding, you keep asking. Or as one yes, youngsters one time, yeah, he, he took his parents to the police. Why? He said they are very controlling. <laughs> Okay, what do you mean by very controlling? When they tell you, don't do this, do this, for your own benefit, is this controlling? They want to benefit you. Okay, so we want your akhlaq to improve, first of all, at home with your parents, and all of us, we need to improve our akhlaq with everyone. And once we observe Ramadan like this, my dear brothers and sisters, Ramadan will taste different. And Ramadan, we will come out of Ramadan with our sins, all of our sins, what? Wiped out, cleared out. And Ramadan will be a journey of reform, reform of this Ummah, to be as Allah Jalla wa Ala wanted it to be. كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ You are the best nation ever raised to mankind in joining the good or leading the evil and believing in Allah Jalla wa Ala. Make a lot of dua, brothers. Make a lot of dua because Allah Jalla wa Ala mentioned the verses of dua during fasting, which means that dua is connected to fasting. Yeah, make a lot of dua every day. Try to make dua that Allah Jalla wa Ala helps you to come closer to Him, that Allah Jalla wa Ala grants you His pleasure, that Allah Jalla wa Ala grants your parents, grants the community, grants this Ummah the victory, and 
Don't forget your brothers and sisters in Gaza. Every single day make dua to them that Allah Jalla Ala grants them victory because the month of Ramadan historically the Muslim Ummah and inshallah, inshallah, we will see victory for the Muslim Ummah in general and in particular for our brothers and sisters in Gaza. Jazakumullah khairan. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam. Jazakallah khairan to uh, Sheikh Haytham for the very, mashallah, inspiring and engaging talk. Alhamdulillah, it was very beneficial for all of us, for our youngsters, for the seniors, mashallah. The Sheikh does very well to cater for, for everyone, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him, protect him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of his efforts. And may Allah allow him to visit again, inshallah. He uh, alluded to the fact, inshallah, we'll be here another time, so inshallah. I don't know whether you will invite me again. <laughs> <laughs> Always invite me. Yeah, Maulana, he has another view. Inshallah, <laughs> 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 uh, now there'll be uh, some food provided for everyone, inshallah. So please uh, make your way, uh, wash your hands in the wudu area, and make your way, inshallah. <laughs>